to make me a YouTube watcher. Oh. It's important to know the numbers behind the game. And Delyn Colvert has done the best job of anybody in the history of organized cribbage to lay that out and to try to do it in a way that's understandable. So in your lesson packet, you'll see something that's labeled 7-2. And it shows what's the odds. Now, when you look at that, there's a there's a bar graph there on seven dash two, and you look at the number of eight, nine, and ten deal games. What percentage of all deals are 8, 9, and 10 deals? What percentage of games are 8, 9, or 10 deals? Yeah. I, I, actually, it's probably well over 90%. I have played one game that went 13 deals, and I have played one game that went 5 deals. Now, if you think if you think about that, five deals, five into 121 is how many? It's almost an impossibility. I wrote it up and sent it in to Hal's crib. It was on the computer, never with a live person. Six, six deals is the fewest deals I've ever had with a, li a live individual. But this was on a computer program, and the game was over in five deals. You divide 5 into 121, it's 24. Now, if you're going to average 24, that must mean when you're dealing, you're getting 36, right? Because half the time, my opponent's dealing. So anyway, 8, 9, and 10. Now, an important thing to understand is the dealer of the first game has first count on the even deals. So who's counting first on the eighth ga eight deal games, and who's counting first on the 10 ga deal games? The, the person that won the first grip. And that's why, we'll get into this more as we move along, there is a terrific advantage to having the first deal. Because you not only get an extra grip an extra chance to peg as the dealer. You're likely to have first count on the deal that ends the game. So when people ask what percentage of your games do you win if you have the opening deal, I tell them 66%. They say, well, what percentage do you deal when you win if you don't have the deal? Barely 50. And I've asked Toll, I've asked Lynn, I've asked many other players over the year that have kept track. And it's between 15 and 17 points difference between their winning if they don't have the opening crib compared to what it is if they do. And you have no control, or I'm not suggesting to you that you need to take two hours a day and practice cutting. <laughs> But the truth is, there is a big advantage. Now, sometimes you won't see that advantage over even in nine games or 100 games. But over 1,000 games, huge advantage. OK. Mine's about 17. Now. So you get down the board, and some of these other numbers are important to know, too. You see on the next page here, it shows the dealer hand analysis. And it shows you the most frequent, again, a bar graph. Notice the longest bar on the chart. 
How many times have you heard people talk about the basic eight? If you're really looking at the basic, six is the lar longest bar on the chart. Six is the longest <coughs> bar on the chart. That's how the dealer's hand looks. And then if you look over in the corner there, it'll show you what the average amount of pegs as the dealer and the average amount of crib score as the dealer. For those of you who wonder about crib scores, if you get very good at discarding, you'll be able to average 5.0, short periods of time. If you get very good at cribbage and you're looking at it over a course of a year, you'll be at 4.8. Yeah? That's on my chart here. At the end of the sixth line, it says 160. Should that be an eight? Well, it's, it must be a misprint. I'm sorry. That's out of the Lynn's book. <laughs> it shows the 8 is 170 and the 6 is 160. I think the number that's wrong is the 140 for the, for the 8. I think is the way it actually balances. It, it ought to be less than 170, yeah. like 140. I think yeah, I think, you're, I think that's right. But I, I show you this only because I, I think folks fall into the trap to believing that they're just automatically going to score eight. Uh, I can't remember how many people t described their hands as a basic eight. And then I got to thinking, how come it's not basic for me? <laughs> uh, it ain't basic for me. So maybe it's not basic at all. See? Well, the theory of 26 assumes that these figures are going to happen. See? And maybe it's not. And you'll see next week at least that I'm going to demonstrate to you that it's not. And if you, if you analyze your own game over a period of a number of games, at least 100, I think you'll find that you're not doing it either. Okay. So that's what happens when we're talking about the theory of 26. 10 of those 26 points, 10.2, are what we get when we deal on average. That's non-dealer, I'm sorry, non-dealer, that's 2.1 pegs, 8.1 hand. Then we're going to jump down here to the dealer. And the dealer's hand, why does the dealer's hand, in, at least in this example and in several I've done where I've kept track of 40 games or more, why? Why would the dealer's hand be slightly smaller than the non-dealer's hand? Yeah, the dealer's trying to put a couple points in the crib. So it has an eight, eight point hand, but he'd like to put the deuce tray in the crib. So, so he gives up two points in the hand and holds six, uh, or, for example. And, or the five jack, he could hold he could hold a pair of fives and a pair of jacks for 12. Instead, he holds jack, jack, queen, king, and puts the five, five in his crib. So the dealer hand average may, in fact, be slightly smaller than the opponent's. Pegs, 3.5. That may go as high as 3.8 or 3.9, but not over a long period. And so then the crib average is 4.8. I find that to be true whether I play in live play or on the computer, that 4.8 is the average crib. So you add those, you get 16.2 and 10 here. So when they talk about the theory of 26, it's a combined peg crib score, hand score for two deals. The most common score, when you add these together, is, is 15 points. If you look at uh, other questions on that? 